Time to round up a big topic from the week. Americans own more than 5 million AR-15s. And now lawmakers are worried the Obama administration is trying to ban the bullets for them. The ammunition under fire is a green-tipped M855 bullet. 239 members of Congress signed a letter to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives concerned about the possible ban. The ATF says this is intended to protect law enforcement while respecting the interests of sportsmen and the industry. So is the possible bullet ban infringing on Americans' rights or is it protecting everyone from harm? That's our topic this half hour. You can weigh in on our Fox 26 Facebook page. You can find the post there about the topic. And you can also weigh in on Twitter. Be sure to use the hashtag Fox 26 for life. Joining us live in the newsroom is our roundup panel. It's led by our Fox 26 senior legal analyst, Chris Tritico. We also have our news analyst, Mustafa Tamiz, and conservative blogger, Debbie Fancher. Good morning again, guys. Good morning. All right, so what do you think about all of these lawmakers have, have gone to the Obama administration now, urging them not to pass this ban? Well, it's going to be met with the same uh, level of scrutiny that uh, they have been met with every every other time they've gone to the Obama administration and said we object to this. Uh, the the divide hasn't changed any. The, the real question here is, you know, these bullets have been banned in handguns since 1986. Uh, the Second Amendment argument here is you can't infringe upon my right because this is a sporting. Uh, this is for sport. Well, I've never met a deer that was wearing a, a bulletproof vest that you had to pierce when you were going to shoot it. And so the question becomes, if you're banning one bullet but not the other bullets, how is it really an infringement on someone's Second Amendment rights when we know that these bullets, uh, banning these bullets, will go towards protecting our law enforcement community? Let's start with soft, must <clears throat> What's your name? We'll start with Mustafa <laughs> this time. I mean, look, they're banning one, they're proposing banning one bullet ATF is. Not every bullet for an AR-15. What's the big deal? There isn't a big deal, but the, the, <clears throat> the NRA has been taken over by gun manufacturers, and they use any type of these controversies to rile up the base because it helps sell more guns and it helps sell more bullets. And so this is going to get through the Congress. I'm sure there's going to be legislation uh, to overturn, the, to protect this bullet, um, and it will get a veto from the president. So this is just, we've seen this movie before, it's kind of exercise in futility. After Sandy Hook, we thought we were going to get some kind of gun regulations, we didn't. Um, so any type of, any intrusion on any type of a bullet or a gun is unacceptable to the right, and no matter what we do, no matter what we say, no matter how logical it is, it's just not going to fly by them. Debbie, if you can still buy bullets for your AR-15, why do you have to have an armor-piercing bullet? Well, you know that many bullets, many rifle bullets are armor-piercing, not just these green tip bullets. So where does it stop? You know, if these, if these particular bullets are being banned, where does it stop for other bullets not being banned? Um, and I do believe that it's infringing upon uh, the rights of especially the hunters who, um, who particularly like these bullets because they, um, they're very effective in killing these animals. They're also effective in killing bears and other large animals. Um, so I, I believe that perhaps um, the, the law enforcement community, maybe, uh, maybe perhaps we can make better uh, armor vests perhaps. But, uh, but to say, you know, this particular bullet, because we're going to protect law enforcement, I think is actually an excuse to, uh, to start slowly taking away ammunition. And, um, you know, and, I do, and I'm a, a gun owner myself. Um, I don't own an AR-15, um, just a handgun. But, um, you know, I, soon, maybe perhaps, they might start, you know, saying, hey, your nine millimeter, um, uh, bullet uh, is... But there's no proposal for any of that. Well, there's not. There's not a proposal, but that's how it starts. Remember, I was born in Venezuela. They did this in Venezuela. They started with ammunition. Slowly, it started going to gun um, control. All right, so. let's go to Sally. She's monitoring our social media. Okay, let's take a look at Twitter first. One of our reporters here at Fox, Andrea Watkins, covered this story this week. Uh, she, she's tweeting out uh, the, the, the framework here that the ATF put out, and she's saying that the police union, our local police union, says it will not make them safer, this ban. And then this guy says also any high-powered hunting rifle will penetrate police body armor. Why is that never heard with stories about the M855 round? 
You know, and, 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 and Debbie just brought up a good point, uh, I, I, I think, I haven't researched <laughs> it, but that there's, there's more than one bullet that does this. So what about that, Mustafa? I mean, if, the, if, there's, uh, if, if these AR-15s will pierce, and, pierce the uh, body armor anyway, and there's more than one bullet, why are we attacking this bullet? Why well, this poor bullet, Mustafa? This, well, this poor bullet <laughs> is, is, is designed to pierce armor, versus other bullets are, they, they might do it because they're part of a high-powered rifle. So when something is made to do this, um, you would think that, you know, we would try to protect our law enforcement. But again, look, this is the same Congress that, uh, after a Republican speaker put a bill to fund Homeland Security, that vast majority of them voted against it. It's the same Congress that claims to be for law enforcement, but when it comes to an armor-piercing bullet that can go through their wet vest, um, they're not willing to support law enforcement in this. But the, the police union. Uh, the local police union here said we're we're not we're not in favor. Of well, I think that individual police unions are going to have their case because some of the some of the policemen are happen to be hunters and strong advocates of Second Amendment. But just because one police union uh, in one city uh, says something, that doesn't mean the entire law enforcement they're, they're speaking for the entire law enforcement community. Millions of police officers out there. Debbie, we we have for years accepted reasonable limits on our First Amendment rights to speak that 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 the Supreme Court has approved. What's wrong with certain reasonable limits on your Second Amendment that doesn't infringe on your complete Second Amendment rights? Well, I mean, I think, I think with your point with the First Amendment, um, you know, it would be the same as saying, well, you know, you can say whatever you want, but uh, the newspaper is just not going to distribute it. So I, I feel like, um, like doing that is, um, is an infringement upon my rights. All right. um, I'm not a hunter, but I know that hunters. But you might want to. Someday. But I might want to. Hunt <laughs> <We're> Absolutely. <gonna. laughs> and furthermore, have there been any policemen that have been murdered because of these bullets? Well, I don't know the answer to that. That's a okay. good question. We'll look there into that. Go.